So we're, we're now going to look at an interesting example of a vector field. And the vector field is f equals minus y over x squared plus y squared, comma, x over x squared plus y squared. OK, so what's interesting about this? The claim that well, let's 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 call these components p and q. So this is p. So the claim is that p y equals q x, but f is not conservative. So that might bother you because didn't we just prove that if py equals qx then f is conservative? Well we did prove that but we only proved that when f is defined on a simply connected domain. So if the domain is not simply connected then we don't know whether f is conservative or not. Now what domain is f defined on? Well if you look at this ex expression you see we're dividing by x squared plus y squared and we're not allowed to divide by zero so f is defined on the origin, sorry, on the plane with the origin removed. Now if you take the plane and remove the origin, whoop, suddenly it's no longer simply connected. So this is not a simply connected domain the removed origin counts as a whole. So this doesn't contradict the theorem we proved, because the theorem we proved only worked when the domain was simply connected. This is an example to show that if the domain is not simply connected, then even when py equals qx, it's possible for the vector field to not be conservative. Right, so let's prove the claim. So what's py? Um, well, by the rule for differentiating a quotient, it's the bottom of the fraction times the derivative of the top, and we're differentiating with respect to y, so that's minus 1, minus the top of the fraction, which is minus y, times the derivative of the bottom with respect to y, which is 2y, over the bottom squared. So if you work this out, I've got x squared and I've got minus y squared, but then I'm adding 2y squared. So this is um, x squared plus y squared, sorry, minus x squared, and minus x squared, and then plus y squared over x squared plus y squared squared. Let's check qx. So it's x squared plus y squared times the derivative of x, which is 1, minus x times the derivative of x squared plus y squared, which is 2x, over x squared plus y squared squared. So here I have a plus x squared, but a minus 2x squared. So again, I'm going to get minus x squared plus y squared over x squared plus y squared squared. Okay, so, so py equals qx. Now why is it not conservative? Um, so it's not conservative because if c is the unit circle, well, then what's the, what's the line integral of f around the unit circle. So if we parameterize the unit circle in the usual way, as x equals cosine t, y equals sine t, and t goes from 0 to 2 pi, then this line integral is the integral from 0 to 2 pi of what? So I have to take p 
times the derivative of x with respect to t. So that's um, minus y of t over x of t squared plus y of t squared times x prime of t um, dt. And then for the other term, I get plus the integral from 0 to 2 pi of x of t over x of t squared plus y of t squared times um, y prime of t dt. Okay, now putting this all together, so minus y is sine, minus sine t, and x prime is also minus sine t. So I get sine squared t, and then um, x of t is cosine t, and y prime of t is also cosine t. So I have plus cosine squared t, and then what's on the bottom of both of these fractions is cosine squared t plus sine squared t. So that's a fancy way of saying 1. So this is the integral from 0 to 2 pi of 1 dt, which is 2 pi. I mean, this vector field, if you think about what it's doing, is actually, it's actually um, tangent to the to the circle at each point. Okay? And it has on the unit circle it has length one. So when you integrate around the circle, you're gonna get two pi. Okay, so that's just a warning that if you know that PY equals QX, you can't jump to the conclusion that F is conservative if your domain is not simply connected. By the way, there's another interesting fact about this vector field F. Namely, if C is any closed curve in R2, which doesn't go through the origin, then the integral over C of f dot dr, while it's not necessarily zero, as we've seen, it is always 2 pi times an integer. And this integer is called the winding number of C around the origin. And the idea of the winding number is it counts how many times you go around the origin. So for example, if my curve C starts here, and it's going this way, and let's say it goes like that. Well, now we've sort of gone around once. Maybe we go back a little bit, and maybe we go around some more. And this curve has a winding number of 2. If the arrow were going the other way, the winding number would be minus 2. Um, now, why is this true? So the idea is as follows. So let's parameterize C. Where the domain is some interval, say, from A to B. Then by definition, the integral over C of f dot dr is the integral from A to B of minus y over x squared plus y squared, comma, x over x squared plus y squared, dot product with x prime comma y prime, where the prime indicates derivative with respect to t, times dt. So I can write this more compactly as the integral from a to b of minus x prime y plus xy prime over x squared plus y squared dt. And then the claim is that this integrand is d theta dt. So here theta is the usual polar coordinate. Now that's not really a well-defined function because it's only defined up to adding integer multiples of 2 pi, but one can still make sense of its derivative with respect to t, and its derivative is, is exactly this fraction. And why is that true? Well, suppose I write x equals r cosine theta and y equals r sine theta. 
Well, I can differentiate these equations with respect to t. So I get x prime equals r prime cosine theta minus r sine theta times theta prime. And y prime equals r prime sine theta plus r cosine theta times theta prime. And I can multiply the first equation by minus y. So I get minus y x prime equals minus r r prime cosine theta sine theta and then plus, and this r sine theta is a y, so I get y squared times theta prime. And I can multiply the second equation by x, so I get xy prime equals r r prime cosine theta sine theta plus, and this r cosine theta is an x, so I get x squared theta prime. And you can now solve these two equations for theta prime. So you get theta prime so I just add the two equations, and then this, this part cancels out. So I get theta prime equals xy prime minus yx prime over x squared plus y squared. So that's exactly what I've got in the integral here. So when we evaluate this integral from a to b, we're going to get the net change in theta as t goes from a to b. So if our curve goes around the origin, say n times, then the net change in theta is going to be 2 pi times n. So that's the basic idea of why this integral of f dot dr is equal to 2 pi times the winding number.